Daniel O'Donnell is back with his new album, Halfway to Paradise. He joins me now. You see, you're a man with a sense of humour as well, I'm... clearly. <laughs> I'm no good fixing boilers, though, apparently. <laughs> Stick to the music. Stick to the music. And you have done this new album, Daniel. There's over six, there's 60 tracks. That's a lot of music in there. I know. It's... And it's some of your favourites just from over the years, yes, really. More yes. sort of 50s, 60s. That's scale, right. Isn't All it? 50s and 60s. Yeah. Uh, we did a, a few albums of rock and roll. Both the up-tempo and the ballads. Yes, it's, I'm delighted with it. Yeah, you're very... And it's 35 years in the music business at this point, Daniel. Yes. So there's not very many people will, will get to say that. And it's something that you just always wanted to do. Yes, I all... I suppose from I was in my mid-teens, I had this desire to... Well, I always sang, even when I was small, but when I, in my mid-teens, I just got this thing in my head it would be great to have a career in music. My sister had sung, you know, for many years before that, and I joined her band in 1983, or 81, sorry. And they had made my first record in 83. And uh, then about 1986, things began to take shape. And here we are. And here we are. Yeah. And you've got a loyal fan base. And Very. I've interviewed many of your fans over the years mm -hmm. and chatted and spent time with them, Daniel, back home particularly. And they are an extraordinary loyal bunch. And you mm. must feel that. The second a new album comes out, the love sort of just Absolutely. comes back again, doesn't They're it? They're incredible. I mean, the albums... I mean, this album went in the midweek chart at number five, and that's down to the loyalty of the people you know, going out and buying and who do shows, they're there at the shows. And some people have been going to the shows for 30 whatever years. Yeah. As long as I'm on the road, they've been there and I've got to know so many people because I get to meet people after all the shows. And, you know, I go out on the stage and, and you see when eventually the, the eyes now are not as good <laughs> maybe as they used to be when you get seeing out with the lights. So many familiar faces, yeah. it's, it's terrific. They're friends now, Absolutely. really, aren't they, more than fans? Yeah. And you're sort of, sort of taking a slightly different field musically next year when you're working alongside Simon Cowell's uh, friend and producer. Yes, and I've been working with, with, with um, Nigel for this last uh, six months or mm. so, and uh, we've enjo I've enjoyed it immensely. I was with him just over the weekend, and we kind of finished all the songs, and we still have a bit to do, um, you know, towards maybe the end of November, but the, the songs are all all done now. Not not that different, I suppose. I've recorded a lot of songs that'd be familiar to people, like "Take Good Care of My Baby" and "Smile." But I've recorded Ed Sheeran's "Perfect" as well. Oh, I went to see Ed in Belfast oh, with brilliant. Siobhan and her husband last year, and he is terrific. Mm. And I love the song. I just love the song. That's so good. It's just a different face. Thought I'd have a wee go with that. But yeah. good, good for you. And I guess, gosh, it also, you know, you've done so much over the years, but Strictly's got to be up there oh. with some of the most bizarre, I'm guessing, Daniel. Well, and you, and you have described as being the best yet worst experience the ever. Best and I and get the worst. that. <laughs> Absolutely. I met Joanne yesterday just by chance in the street, who's, uh, you know, in charge of Strictly. And, um, I, she says, oh, you may come back and do the Christmas special. I says, do you want me to die on the spot? <laughs> <laughs> but do you know it's the greatest show ever? It, it, it really is. And I would say to anybody that's asked, do it. But I, I, it's so... I mean, I've been on stage all my life, really. And yet, and strictly, I was just reduced to jelly every night. Yeah. <laughs> I would, when you're up at the top of the stairs, and when I watch it, and I think these people have to walk down the steps now. Yeah, yeah. And then it's hearing you, that music, oh, does it still fill you with fear? Yes, I understand. Even the that. first song we learned was Jess Glynn, you know that song that's on, on everything? Uh huh. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. I can't remember the name of it now, but it's. Uh, and we did the group dance to that. And when I hear that, because it's on aeroplanes and it's in shopping centres, I literally stop <laughs> when I hear it. <laughs> There's no dance. And I met Peter Andre out in the green room this morning. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we still have the WhatsApp group. Oh, yeah. Of it's... the group that was with us. That's and it. every so often we have, you know, a message will come on. Uh... That was the greatest part of it for me. All the people that I met, and the people backstage, you know, the makeup and the yeah, wardrobe. It was just a great experience. Mm -hmm. Just mm. less so of the dance. But the night I left, I said it was like the, <laughs> the great escape. Usain Bolt and Mo Farah wouldn't have run as fast. <laughs>
<laughs> Bye. <laughs> well, Daniel, it's always such a delight to see you. Um, Halfway to Paradise is the album out now. I know you're going to America for tour, coming back for Christmas. New album again and more music next year. It's constantly happening for you. So it's lovely to see well, you. Well, it's this lovely morning. to be here. Thanks Thank so you, many. Daniel. Thank you.